Oh man, we live from Detroit, man. I got my boy Cashier Quan back in the building, man, on Say Cheese. How you doing? Doing good, my boy. How you doing? Man, I'm doing good actually, man. Ready for the holidays, ready for ready for Thanksgiving. Yeah, I'm doing uh better than I ever been. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what's your mental space like right now? Shit, everything happy, bro. I'm happy with everything. I'm happy with life, everything going right for me, you feel me? No yeah, issues. I, I mean, I noticed you haven't released any music in the last, a music video in the last like three months. Four months. I just, I mean, the, I'm finna put a concept behind this shit. I ain't finna just keep getting in the camera. Like the next video I do, I'm finna spend like 10,000. You feel me? Um, I don't know if you know who Gerard Victor is, but mm. I'm shooting with him. Get some, you know, extra people in it. Just real video. I'm tired of just doing it and there's no meaning behind the shit. I'm trying to take take it to the next level. Yeah, well, I mean, what made you, what made you just sit down and and rethink this whole rap thing? Because I mean, shit, I'm playing with the bag now, like, you know what I'm saying? Myself, like, I can fund everything myself. No label, nobody helping me. But at first, like, you know, with all the bullshit going on, a nigga was down. You feel me? So I just had to drop, drop, drop to get it back going. But now that I'm in a position that I want to be in, it's time to make that move. Right. You know. Now, I want to address the elephant in the room. Um, I just did an interview with TJ. Um, it's performing really well. Uh, he's in a great space as well, it seems like. He's matured. He's gotten older. Um, he's learned from, you know, past situations. Um, but I did ask him about our interview that we did, and uh, he pretty much responded saying that he didn't take your style. Um, he was taking care of you. He was putting you on game. Um, he uh, he out of the million dollars that he got, he gave you thirty five thousand, and you he just pretty much to sum it up, you're you're being really ungrateful. All right, look, we gonna clear the air right now. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know why he lying. I wish you could just Facetime him on the interview, like brother to brother, man to man. TJ didn't give me thirty five thousand, dog. He gave me the ten that I told you. When me and ten K Kev called him and said, if you don't bring us forty K by tomorrow, we ain't fucking with you. He pulled up and gave me and ten K Kev ten thousand each. Like, he didn't did other little shit, looked out and bought little shit for a nigga and shit like that. But as far as, like, cash, nigga only gave me 10000 And then him taking care of me, he can't really, that was, like, nothing even to say. Like, it was just a time where he had the cheese and I didn't have no cheese. When it was vice versa, before he blew up, I was the nigga doing the same thing. So he, he really shouldn't even say that. Like, that don't even matter, you feel me? When I was down, he was taking care of me. And when he was down, I was taking care of him. Like, that's really how it go for real. So... He yeah. just on this bitch like I'm just fucked up and he just always took care of a nigga like it wasn't even like that. When he was hurting, I was taking care of him. I was hurting, he was taking care of me. Point blank, period. Yeah, and, and real friends should never count favors. Yeah, like we don't count that. That's what I'm saying. Like we shouldn't even count it that. We only counted that because we got into it and it's it's public, you know, how that is now. But that was nothing that neither one of us should have counted. Like, nigga, I took care of you and you took care of me. Okay, so it wasn't 35K, it was 10K. It was 10K. 10K wasn't a Okay, but 10K wasn't enough? I feel like it wasn't enough because what I had to do to get that 10K, you wasn't going to give a nigga shit. Me and your brother had to call you and say, man, put, we hurting over here. Pull up and bring us some cheese, nigga. So I feel like that 10 don't even count because why we had to say that? Okay, so what would have been enough? Because once, and you know, you, you got your money, I've got money, we've done things for people in the past. When, when does the, when does the, the, when does somebody not owe you anymore? I mean, nobody owe you nothing, period. He ain't he don't owe me shit, but it's just like you should have did that. Like that's what real people do for people that was around them before we had this type of money. It ain't like I'm just an eyeball nigga that you ain't talked to in three years coming around like, hey, what's the nigga? I'm we trying to make ends meet. We couldn't even pay for hotels and shit before we blew up. We out of town of Miami just living out there, getting features, hitting plays and shit, trying to Pay for hotels and get food and shit for the day. So that's just how I felt, you feel me? But don't nobody owe you shit. So I ain't saying a nigga wrong because a nigga don't owe you shit at the end of the day. And I had to learn that, but you know how that goes. Yeah. It just it just hit different when it's somebody that you came out the mud with, it was game planning with, y'all had goals together, y'all had the formula, the dynamic duos, the records, the trolling online, and then when the money comes, it fucks up everything. It fucked up everything. I would have been happy with my little 50K. And then I would have been happy with 35. 
I wouldn't have got into it. If somebody offered me 50 and they was like, man, here go 35, you know, everybody in my ear right now. That's cool. We wouldn't have ever got into it if he threw me 35. Like, you didn't throw me 35. That's why I said I wish I could FaceTime him. Like, man, man, bro, you know you didn't give me 35. Like, seriously. I'm done with the trolling line and all that. Like, that man didn't give me 35K, bro. It's been like four years. Like, the jokes is up. Like, he did not give me 35,000. He know that in the bottom of his heart. So, I mean, you watch our interview. What do you, what, what was your takeaway from, from me and his interview? Like, what you mean? Like, what, what like, uh, how'd you feel watching it? Like, I mean, shit, I watched it because everybody kept tagging it, tagging me in it and shit. Then I'm gaining like bunches of followers when, when you know, when it drops. So I was just watching it, listening to everything. Like I said, the nigga ain't really say shit bad. Like, try to bash a nigga. It was just like he had to respond from what I said because I said bad shit. You know what I'm saying? But, like, it is what it is. Like, I watched it. You know what I'm saying? I watched the whole interview, and I just wanted to see what niggas had to say and where niggas been at and shit. You feel me? So, I definitely think y'all still love each other, and I definitely think that more money could be made if y'all were cool than Yeah, but, I mean, I feel you, but, like, I just don't want to do it. Like, we we could link up. Squash the shit, shake hands, take a picture or whatever. But I don't want to, the space I'm in right now, I don't even need no extra niggas around me. Like, I'm good with everybody I got right now. You feel me? So, like, it won't be the same love. Like, it's going to be, I feel like it's going to still be some competition. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I just don't feel like it could happen, bro. What do you mean by competition? You always felt like it was a secret competition? No, I don't feel like that with TJ, but I do feel like that with other people, but it was it wasn't a secret competition. Like I wasn't in secret competition with bro, and I don't feel like he was in secret secret competition with me. But now it's just nasty. Like after all the shit that was said and brought to the light and this and that, and you know niggas showed their true colors. So I feel like I'm a grown man. You a grown man. Like I honestly would never make another song with dude. I know if we link up, took pics, and blew up and made music, we would break the internet again, of course. But I don't want to do that. I'm cool where I'm at right now. Man, in this rap shit, it's a lot of money left on the table. Um, I, ain't I, no, you, I ain't making no money from it. Yeah, I remember. I remember uh, Sob Rbe from uh, the Bay make, making platinum records, gold records, and then ego and pride got in the way. I and wa- now it's so much money left on the table. I watched they whole little situation too. I feel like that was just like, like, like some men, some TJ shit, but just. We ain't get no platinum shit. Like, I couldn't see myself going that big and just flopping. Like, we ain't never do nothing like that. You feel me? Yeah. We just had, like, hood records, silly, goofy records. Like, real people in the real world don't even listen to that shit. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. It seems like afterward, both of y'all are taking music in a different direction. Um, It's not too much troll music. It's not really scam music. He's really he he's teased new records on his Instagram that looks like he's trying to really be a rapper rapper, um, and you you know you've been putting out music that, and it doesn't really seem too. And I don't know, you know if you notice, but I always post on my story every couple months. I post like just me in the car listening to some R release shit. I'd have been on your IG lives a few times, and I was like, "What the fuck is this? Like, nigga, drop this shit." That's what I'm saying. I got some real heat these, but this the thing. Those songs I got, I'm trying to show. The girl going in the bank. I'm trying to show the ice rolly. I'm trying to show the the ice chain. I'm trying to show. I want this shit to be right, like a real movie, so somebody could, some labels or something can tap in. Cause like I just feel like the whole street that I went on a rapping, I never had a label. I've never had no serious person just tap in with a nigga, and I just I never understood why I did everything I was supposed to do. Right. Now I did ask TJ about the million dollars. Uh, when we, when me and you did our interview, you said he went broke, he blew it, um, and he, 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 he says that's a lie. He says, I mean, he did spend some of the money, but he's not broke, and he didn't spend all the million dollars. Man, I ain't gonna lie, that's a lie. If you, if you still had a couple hundred thousand, ain't no where your, ain't no way your jury finna just disappear. Like a nigga gonna still show racks. I'm still showing 50, 60 racks. I stuck thirty on my wrist, twenty on my neck. If you still had a couple hundred thousand, it'll show for it. Like, you don't have no money. Your jury gone. Niggas ain't seen no jury or nothing. Like, I just, I, I, I can't see him having that money. I just, I don't, I don't see it. If you got, anybody know, if you got a couple hundred thousand in your bank account, your jury not finna be nowhere near the pawn shop. Point blank, period. As a rapper, like, so I already know that's cap. Like, 
Yeah. I could tell talking to him that he learned a lot, regrets a lot. He even said that he he regrets a lot of the decisions that he made and he wish he would have just slowed down when the money came. But like we all know, a million dollars is a, that's everybody's dream in America. Yeah, that's yeah, that's everybody's dream in America. So, you know, spinning, 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 and if you ain't making nothing, you know, eventually you gonna blow through with shit. Yeah. I mean, and think about it and not to take sides or anything, but when everybody knows you got money, it just, you can go crazy, man. Everybody hitting you up, asking you for a favor. Cousins, uncles, brothers, aunties. Everybody. It's like that with me right now. And I ain't even got a million dollars. Everybody doing that to me. People I know trying to hold something just on the outside looking in. But I live a different lifestyle than the average person. So this ain't that. You thinking because I got this or I got that, that a nigga should let you hold something. But. A nigga really not straight for real. Like, this some shit a nigga used to have. It. All right. Man, I, I hope y'all will get back together, man. That, that was good times, man. Like, hip-hop needs to... Hip-hop's boring, bro. It's this so, shit ain't... It's, that's why I haven't dropped in four months, because I feel like niggas get on a song and say some bullshit, and the shit just blow up on TikTok. Like, back in the day when I was rapping 2013, 2014, nigga, you had to really have somebody listening. You got to pay... Do this, like, that shit just different. Like, the game washed up. That's why I just told, like, bro and them, like, I don't even want to drop another song. Like, I don't even think I'm going to put out any more music. I'm just an entertainer. Like, I don't care for the music no more. I, I think you should. I feel like you have, a, you have a solid fan base. And all it takes is one record, bro. All it takes is one record. It, all it takes is for a kid to post your music on TikTok and then they just get a million shares and then you're out of here. But I feel like I've been working so hard, I feel like I can't get that record. Like, what do I do to get that record? You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been in the loop since really since like the Dynamic Duo shit, 2019, 2020. I ain't got shit over a million views. Like, I got some shit with like three, four hundred thousand, but I've never got a million views in the last four years. So I feel like I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. I don't know. Yeah, but but there are rappers who don't have three or four hundred thousand. There's rappers who wish they were in your position. Yeah, yeah, I'm over a hundred thousand. I lost a hundred and fifty thousand followers. Came back in a year, over a hundred. I got like one ten right now. Still getting two to three hundred thousands of views. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like my shit doing okay, but like I just need to take. I've been. I feel like I'm a legend, bro, and I've been in the game too long to still be trying to climb. Like I'm done with that. Like you feel me? I feel like it's just time to just take it to another level. Mm. It's funny, before this interview, <laughs> we had joked about you smoking. And, <laughs> I mean, are, are you addicted to the weed? Man, I just be bored. That's just anybody. Everybody I be around smoke as much as me. Niggas just be bored and just roll up for real. Like, weed ain't even really even getting a nigga high for real. But niggas just be bored rolling up. That's how I feel. So you don't get high no more? Shit, I don't really feel like I be high, bro. I'm so used to smoking, you feel me? Like, that shit just boring like i damn near just want to stop for real like that shit just boring as hell so it just really became a habit it's a part of your lifestyle now yeah like i gotta smoke every two three hours i gotta smoke and i ain't gonna lie i had stopped the lean and shit last interview i told you but i ain't gonna lie two months ago i've been back sipping the drink and shit for like the last two months i've been pulling up again when's the last day you went without smoking do you remember never bro years i've been smoking since 12. I'm about to be 27, bro. So it's been 15, damn near 15 years, like smoking every day. <laughs> and I mean, you haven't thought about putting it down? No, I mean, I was on papers and shit for some shit, but they ain't never say I had to stop smoking. I mean, they did, but shit, I just never stopped. When they when they drug test me, they just, they ain't never say nothing. Like the whole two years of the probation, they never said nothing about the shit when I dropped dirty. So, but that shit over with. Now nah, I'm off now. So, I mean, you're the type of person that has to smoke before they eat, huh? Smoke before I eat, smoke after. Oh, my God. My appetite be fucked up. I don't even eat like that because I smoke so much. And then when I get some food, I take a little bite of the shit and I'm full. So, I mean, when you, let's say you're on a four or five hour flight and you haven't smoked, what is that feeling like? Do you get like jittery or? No, nah, hell no. Nah. If I'm on a flight, I just smoke a couple blunts before I get on there. I done caught five-hour flights. <laughs> smoke a couple blunts before I get on there, and I'm good. You feel me? And when I touch down, I smoke. 
So so what I'm basically what I'm asking is like if you go a few let's say you get locked up. I don't wish it on nobody, knock, but knock on wood, but I mean I have before though for a couple days. And what's that feeling like? Do you start getting sweats? Do you nah, start shaking? I only do that off off the lean. I was telling you I only used to get with jaws off lean. If I, if I don't pull one, I told you if I didn't pull up lean back in the days, I get sick as hell. That's the only thing I get sick off of some weed. If I don't smoke weed, I'm gonna be straight. Like that shit don't really it don't do shit for real. Mm. Now you got this new artist that recently uh came out. His name is Punch Made Dev. And he ain't new. I mean, he's start he's not new, but he's he's becoming a household name. I mean, for, the, a, for the scam shit and shit like that. For the scam but, shit. But Punch Made Dev like I just talked to him recently and shit. Like, I fuck with bro or whatever, but, like, I saw even what TJ said on the interview, like, he was a fan. Like, Punch Made Dev could see this right now. Punch Made Dev literally was a fan of me and TJ. Like, we started that shit for real. Punch Made Dev ain't nothing but a fan, bro, that just took it to another level with the scam and shit and the cash app glitch and all that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? But I respect, bro. I fuck with him. He hit me, he hit me up. I hit him back. But, like, Punch Made Dev, no, he looked up to niggas. Mm. Yeah, he had a uh he recently had an altercation with TJ, huh? That shit at the mall. I mean, they been had some shit going on a couple years ago, but that shit was like two years ago. But really, like, it wasn't really even an altercation for real. Like, same how it is with me and TJ. Like, that shit not no beef. Like, if them niggas really saw each other, them niggas ain't gonna do shit to each other for real, bro. That was some camera pull out your phone for the gram shit, bro. In real life, a nigga not gonna do nothing. If I saw TJ, I wouldn't do shit. If he saw me, he wouldn't do shit. Like, that's not beef or nothing. Like, that ain't really no altercation. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I did ask TJ what would it take to get back together. He was like, "Man, I just want to run my fade." <laughs> he don't want to run no fade with me, bro. I ain't gonna lie. He don't want to run no fade with me. Oh uh, man, I, I do want to see y'all back together. Uh. Like I said, the rap game is is is, is boring right now, bro. Boring it's no I'm entertainment. I'm so uninterested, bro. Like my people's just sold me some little nigga song. They was like, "Look at this, this little nigga going hard. He on a Detroit beat spitting and shit." I'm looking at it. I'm bobbing my head. I'm like, "Bro, I don't even want to hear that shit." I didn't heard that like ten times this week. The same shit. Everybody rapping on Detroit beats, even the industry. I'm so sick. They stealing our flow. The whole industry stealing Detroit flow. Every girl that's rapping, every little nigga that's rapping, Detroit beat. Let's argue that. Everybody in the world is still in Detroit sign right now. Yo, real shit. I remember back uh, when I came to Detroit to interview uh, uh, Dex Osama. And um, a lot of people were like, uh, why you in Detroit? Them niggas rap off B. This was the time Chicago was in this. You know in what I'm saying? Real era. Yeah, and people just didn't understand Detroit. But now they want to jump on the way. Every girl want to rap on the Detroit beat. Everybody want to rap on the Detroit beat. So I feel like yeah. we don't get our credit for that. Everybody stole Detroit sound. How did Detroit? How did how did Detroit natives feel about that? That the Detroit sound is so commercial now. The same way as me, it's just corny as hell. Every nigga Detroit beat, Detroit beat, like it's corny as hell. Like leave that shit to us. You feel me? Y'all rap on y'all beats. We rap on our our beats. Y'all wasn't rocking with that shit five six years ago. Mm hmm. I mean, Milwaukee always kind of had that Detroit sound. Y'all are like cousins, kind of, right? Yeah, Midwest, but it's a different, it's a different funk. Like, it's a different sound, but definitely everybody just on the Detroit way. I mean, and it's gotten bad too. I'm starting to see niggas rap on Detroit beats with the shades, the buffs, with the with the buffs, the, the, <laughs> with the whole Detroit. The whole you know kit. what I mean? <laughs> the whole kit, bro. I swear, the Amiri's buff song, chain, a Rolly. Like, and now a nigga a rapper. A couple shares from his homeboys and sisters and brothers, and now niggas rappers. That's why I said I'm sick of the rap shit. It's no entrance. Like, any nigga want to rap nowadays. What's the Detroit scene like now, though? I mean, do you notice a difference in the city? You got the Skiller Babies. You got the uh, the Baby Trons. The, it's... It, so Ice Wear Vezos, the Baby Face. I could keep going. Like, what is that... So Detroit's on another level right now. On another level right now. And I feel like that's another thing with me. I could be bigger if I work with these people. Like, I talk to Tron every day. I swear Vezo like my shit follow me all the time. You feel me? Like, if I work with people, I feel like I'd be on another level. So 2024, I'm finna drop my shit and start working with people. Because at first, 
I didn't want to work with no other artists because I feel like it didn't make sense. But now everything makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's Detroit. That's this nigga flow. That's what it is. Everything makes sense now. So I feel like it's time for niggas to just take off. You, you, do you ever think it was that Detroit niggas didn't look at you serious because they kind of thought you were just like a troll? Nah, because, bro, that troll shit is new, bro. That's with TJ, 2020. I got hits in 2017, 2016, 2018. The real Cash Quan, Sheesh, Dog. I got some like I got some real hits, bro. Where everybody like out where I was really at my peak. Like none of that offbeat shit. Really rapping. That that um troll shit. That's that shit new for real. Niggas already know. That's why everybody be telling me like you need to go back to that old casher. That's when I was really fucking with your shit type shit. But shit, that troll shit was new for real. Yeah, why it seemed like Pablo Skywalker really never got his his credit. I fuck with Pablo Skywalker. Uh, I feel like it's another thing with me. I feel like we was too ahead of our time. Like, we was doing this shit in 013, 014, like, when niggas wasn't fucking with it. So now all these newer kids that's coming up, somebody that was 14, four years ago, that's 18 now, they just know the newer rappers. They don't know Cash or Quan. They don't know Pablo Skywalker. They don't really know the history. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I feel like it was the type of thing like that where we was just he was just too ahead of his time for real. Yeah, cause I mean this was at a time they was doing they shit around what was this like around the drill era, right? Like shit, Chief Keef era kind of like, like thirteen right? for real. Yeah, thirteen, fourteen niggas was popping, but I feel like you can still keep it going because I was one of those artists that. Was rapping around that time, and I still I still got a, a a dog ass fan base. So I feel mm -hmm. like you can keep it going for sure. You just gotta structure yourself. Some people just can't keep keep up. Cause yeah. I feel like it's a lot of this. This might not make sense to you, but it makes sense to me. I feel like it's a lot of artists that got more followers and that's bigger than me, but I'm really bigger than them. It's about influence. A yeah. lot of a lot of artists got followers, but they not really influential. Like you go around and ask somebody, like you ever heard of such and such? No. You ever heard of Cash Quan? Yeah. It might say some negative shit. The offbeat nigga, he ass, or it might be some negative shit, but it don't matter, nigga. You heard of Cash Quan. Right. <laughs> I, I was asking TJ about the African scam and the Instagram scam, and he was like breaking down the different scams. Like, was y'all ever like doing this shit together? Uh we was like, I met him around that time. Like, like I told you on the um last couple interviews back, I met TJ because he was a fan, bro. He was spamming me like I was broke or something. Like, nigga, you ain't got no paint, whatever, whatever. And I answered the video call, like, who the fuck is this? He upping some money. Then I got to upping some money. And then that's when we became cool after that because he was a fan of Cash or Guan. You know what I'm wow. saying? So, but he was doing doing it and I was doing it too, but we didn't, we didn't, we didn't know each other. Like we clicked after that and we were still, you know, doing the shit together or whatever. Wow. So y'all met via Instagram. Man, I dog, I used to love them days. It was so green, dog. Like, <laughs> I'm talking about people who is new to the world. We selling Xbooks, Mac MacBooks. People flipping their cash. Turn you remember the five? Turn your five hundred to turn five thousand mm -hmm. shit. We doing that. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like that shit was crazy. Like that time was a time to be alive. Like. That's crazy. I remember that. That turned five five hundred into five thousand. We started that shit. <laughs> Band game me. All of us, we started that shit for real. That flip so your cash shit. Yeah, right. So wait, you would tell somebody, pay me five hundred dollars, and I'm gonna give you, and I'm gonna send you back five thousand. So look, this is how you do it. I'm gonna break it down. The scam so old, I don't even care if they can, they can have it. So this is how you do it. Instagram so crazy now. If you make a page like that, they gonna delete it off bills. Like it's just janky. Back then, it wasn't like that. You make a page. You like what you set it up, you know what I'm saying? You post like yo guy you want to be, get a professional guy in a suit, whatever. You get people that you know, cause you scamming people. So you will go to your cousin, your auntie. Hey, my name was CJ. Like CJ just got me paid twenty five thousand a day, showing the cash and shit like that. So people thinking it's real, you know. People knew the Instagram, but how I was doing it, I'll go to like uh, George Lopez page or something like Mexicans, and I get the comment under George Lopez page. Like if you want to make some cash, text this number. Soon as I wait for new celebrities to make to make a post. Soon as they make, oh, George Lopez posted five seconds ago. I'm coming. If you're interested in making some cash, text this phone number. You will get the phone. You will get 10 people. Hey, I'm interested in making extra cash. I see all these people flashing this cash. How I make this cash? I got $500. 
You know, so you telling people you work for MoneyGram and Western Union, basically. Like, because that's, it wasn't no, damn, oh, it wasn't no Cash App or Venmo or none of that back then. It was Western Union, MoneyGram. So you telling people, I work for Western Union, MoneyGram, any amount you send me, I'm putting a zero behind it. So basically, if you go MoneyGram, to, I got people that work at MoneyGram. If you go send Sean Cotton 5000 through MoneyGram, <laughs> he going to turn it, he going to turn it to 50000 how often did this shit work? Every day. Bro, I was a kid, bro. I had like 20 racks, bro. I was like 15, 16. I had like 20,000, bro. More than my peoples, bro. <laughs> Scamming niggas every day for thousands of dollars, bro. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm, it's crazy I'm telling you this on camera because like, I, we could really get indicted for that shit, nigga. That was real fraud. We got fake IDs. We picking up the, because our name got burnt out. Like, I was using my real name, but it get burnt out after you receive so much cheese, so... Now it's like you getting fake IDs made up in my face. I'm going to Western Unions, getting the cash. That shit, a nigga could really get indicted behind that. I remember it was a point in time, there would be so many pages. People would, pe it was easy to get people because people would post, they would steal pictures of money and put it on their page. And put it on their page and people would be, how do I get this money? But look, it's a new era of this shit going on right now with the Punch Made Dev shit. All these, do you see all these little Instagram? Have you ever just be scrolling on Instagram and see like a little kid with a bunch of cash? You be seeing that shit? Yeah. It's like like the Punch Made Dev shit. It's a lot of these guys doing the cash app shit. It's like they having you send them to the money to their cash app. They basically saying they gonna turn it into something. If you got 200 on your cash app sitting, we gonna turn it to 2,000. So these little 19, 20 year olds, they doing the same shit we was doing. 10 years ago, but just with cash app and shit. Getting videos, showing a bunch of cash, trying to scam people. So people would send you money through Western Union. I mean, and you wouldn't send nothing back, right? Nah, hell no. Nah. Why would I do so, that? So once they sent the money, do you block their number? What would you? I keep it going. This shit like a, man, I kept it going. It's a nigga name. Uh, I'll call my friend right now on FaceTime. Man, can I call him on the FaceTime and me an interview? If you want to, yeah. We're going to do this real quick. You can hear me now? So, look, when I take my phone off, you're not going to be able to hear me because, you know, this phone tripping. So, look, we in the middle of an interview right now. So, how many times did I scam that uh, that Garrett, that Garrett Bell guy? You remember him? How long was I scamming? Tell me how long was I scamming him for and how many times did I scam him? Say it right now. How many times did I scam him? Twenty times. I'm gonna call you back. Y'all yeah, probably couldn't hear my friend, but you know it's no cap. That really was somebody on the phone. But I I scammed the guy not twenty times, like two two hundred times. I scammed this man two hundred times. No over exaggeration. Two hundred times. Like for two years straight, he lost his job. His wife divorced him. Like, bro, this shit real, bro. Like, this shit is really real. This man lost his wife. His his he, he down there tried to slit his he went to the hospital and sent me a picture of him trying to slice his arm, bro. Because I'm taking all his cash, bro. I'm telling him I work for the IRS. You done sent me 20000 already. The IRS is investigating this. I got his social, so every time he I block him for two weeks. As soon as he get paid, I'll call him. Like the IRS just called me and they said it's 2500 in your bank account. Leave work right now. And send me that, or they finna fuck you up. This man is working at the hospital, Sean, cutting people heart open. A doctor, a real doctor, making twenty five hundred a week. He like, bro, I'm in the middle of surgery, like leaving work <laughs> to go money gram me his whole paycheck, bro. If the feds see this, I might go to jail. I'm scared to even put this allegedly, out. allegedly. Let's we gotta say allegedly, man. And it's people that I done scam real women with their kids, sending me crime, evicted. I'm not going to lie to you. Those type of situations, I sent the money back on my grandma's grave. A lady got evicted and she was crying like, ah! I sent her all her money back plus more. I swear to God. I had scammed somebody else for like 5000 She sent me 1000 I sent her back 2000 I said, I apologize about that. I know I shouldn't be doing this. It's too, I'm sending you back 2000 is this before you met TJ or y'all doing this together? Way before TJ. TJ was a kid. I'm six, seven years older than him. TJ was 13 years old when I was doing this shit. He wasn't scamming all that. He, saying he was scamming since 11, that shit capped. TJ ain't start scamming till he was about 14, 15. 
He was still a kid, you feel me? Back when I was like, because I was only 16 when I was doing this. But how you going to say it's Cap if you didn't know him when he was 9, 10 years I old? I mean, I knew him when he was like 13, 14. He wasn't really scamming. He just started doing that shit when he was like 13. <laughs> so, so wait, you taught him the game? You taught him the scam shit? No, Kev he... did. Okay. Kev taught him the scam shit. So are, are you learning shit from Kev too? No, nah, I have. We, we are already, we already, I knew everything. Everything that they knew, I knew. We just clicked together like. We was doing the Instagram scam shit and all that, but back to that, bro, I really fucked people up. People was, this man cutting people hard at work, and he leaving to go send me money, bro. Like, then I had another lady, same shit, bro, scamming this lady for like a year straight, bro. People thinking they about to get back 400000 How How are you meeting these people? Off Instagram, bro. I got a bunch of followers, and it's real followers, too, because I'm paying for promotions and all type of crazy shit, so... It's just random ass people will follow me. Like, shit, I want to make some cash. I, I went through my friend followers and I saw you. I'm trying to make some cash right now. I got 500 right now. Dead ass serious. Like, So do you ever feel bad about, I mean, you said this dude went through a divorce, tried to kill himself. And I'm not even going to lie. Like, people might think I'm capping or something, bro. Like, I put that on my dead grandma's like, soul. <laughs> I'm dead ass serious, bro. Like, I'm not even on no trolling shit. Like, that's crazy. I mean, yeah, but do you think that it's go that's bringing bad karma your way? Man, for sure, for sure, bro. I used to hate waking up doing that shit every day. But that's like a nigga waking up selling dope every day. And shit, a nigga had to do what he had to do to get that paid. But that's that's as far as the flipping your money shit. But when that died down, we got to selling Xbox and clothes. I don't feel bad about that because you had that cash to blow. You was finna go buy an Xbox. So if I scared you, you know what I'm saying? You would be all right, nigga. I ain't gonna lie, because you had that cash to blow. But flipping your money, trying to pay your rent and some shit like that, I feel bad scamming a nigga like that. But as far as you trying to buy some damn shoes or something, nigga, I need that. Like, you'll be all right. You buy shoes, ne your next paycheck. So you're selling imaginary Xboxes, not the real thing. I mean, you ain't getting nothing. It's just pictures of the shit. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just pictures of the shit. You see your name, you cash out the bread. Oh, it was an error with the package. Uh, The package got stuck up at our office. We'll need you to send another $250 to push the package through. Okay, another $250. Hey, now they're saying that you have to send the full payment in one. So the whole $650 you send me, you have to go to Cash App and send that in one payment. Boom, another $650. Your money is locked. Now you have to send $1,200. $2,400 out of nigga. Block. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit just crazy. Like, You'd be surprised how dumb people are. It's dead, nah. You can't do that shit no more. Instagram gonna delete your page for one. Then, now nah, niggas gonna, it's so much shit. Niggas gonna be like, bro, FaceTime me. Back then, niggas didn't really care. Nah, niggas be like, bro, can you FaceTime me at your warehouse and show, show me the items? Like, you had smart people that I run across. Like, you ain't got this shit for real. You feel me? Video call me with this shit. You feel me? But I'm so advanced, all my real shit that I got at the crib, I'm really calling niggas with 20 pair of shoes. Like, bro, I do this shit for real, but that's really just my real shit that I'm buying off the scamming shit. Like, so that shit was making sense. Have anybody ever scammed you? Yes. I got scammed. Me and TJ and Kev got scammed before. Wait, tell, tell me about this story. We got scammed <laughs> before. I'm not gonna lie, by African. How? <laughs> because we was, bro, we was we was young as hell. We was, um, so he was going crazy or whatever. He had fake money, but it was real because it was, he was spending the shit. Like he was making it another bill. And he was literally spending the money. He's passing the marker, passing the, the, the thing and everything. He FaceTiming us, showing to the cheese and everything. Man, we sent that nigga like 5,000. We all put like 1,500 together, sent like 5,000. We're supposed to get 50K. You know, we thinking like that shit good, so we gonna try to, you know, get that shit off, whatever. We young as hell. Man, we had sent that nigga the shit and he scammed us, dog. <laughs> I swear to God. And then one of them <laughs> niggas trying to send him some more money. Uh, I think it was this nigga Kev. Kev trying to send him some more money because he trying to re rock us. I'm like, bro, we not sending that nigga nothing else, bro. Until he sent something else. Like, <laughs> but we got scammed before. I ain't gonna lie. What about the scam where, um, You'll, you'll tell somebody to make a bank account and then mail you their debit card. That's not card. a scam, bro. I ain't going to lie. I, I don't know if you've been looking, but I've been posting that shit on my kind of on my Instagram a little bit. Every once in a while, I post some money with an account just so not really no super crazy shit, just so niggas know what's on the flow. You feel me? But I, I do that to this day. That's not a scam. Like, my name good with that shit. Like, 
that's not no scam. Like, I really get niggas half. Like, I be doing that shit every day for real. If I put some money in your bank account, just send me half. Like, I put 10000 in there off a check or whatever, send me 5K. You know what I'm saying? You keep 5K. Like, that's literally not a scam. I'm doing that currently to this day. How is it not a... So, wait. Somebody's making a bank account, and you're putting money in it? Exactly. And y'all split it? And we split it. Exactly. And I don't even care who watching this interview like this nigga dumb this or that. It's whatever. Like niggas already know niggas name a tie to the scam shit. Like it's whatever. <laughs> what about the African the African scam? With I ain't never the- I never did that. That that shit like that shit was always dumb to me. But as far as like the bank shit, that's not no scam. Like niggas be seeing a motherfucker post that niggas really trying to get you some paint for real. Like that ain't no scam at all. Who who taught you this shit? Shit, bro. I been I ain't gonna lie. I really been scamming since twelve. I started off doing like iPhones and shit. Really myself. Like I ain't had nobody. Like all my big brothers and peoples, they work like good jobs and get their cheese type shit. I was just always an eyeball nigga. Like I just taught myself that shit. Like literally nobody taught me how to do none of this shit myself for real. So the iPhone the iPhone lick is where basically. You get, you go in, you get iPhones, and then sell them to the plug, and you get way more. Not way more. You get the same amount. If the iPhone a thousand in the store, you get a thousand from the plug or whatever. Well, some Indian plugs they they pay more. They pay they more because they country. ship it overseas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, sometimes you do get more, but that's just like doing some credit shit, getting some phones in a nigga name. You can still do that mm-hmm. to this day, but it's too much like fraud and security and shit. So. Yeah, that T-Mobile just, cracked down on that. Yeah, and then now that phones are a lot, so people are getting these phones, but you they only selling for three or four hundred dollars because oh, this is registered to T-Mobile. Back then, yeah. it wasn't like that. You could get the whole bag, so now it's only like one carrier that's still paying the full price. I think it's like AT and T, but Verizon and all the other ones they paying damn near three four hundred dollars for a thousand dollar phone because it's basically like carrier locked type shit. So that that that's not uh, really green anymore. I mean, people doing it, but they just taking a loss. Five jacks used to be five thousand. Now Man. five jacks is twenty five hundred. But that's still yeah. cheese. So here's a nigga that caught his five phones today and made twenty five hundred. That's still cheese. You know what I'm saying? It's just half off. Back then that was five thousand, and today's age that's twenty five hundred. Yeah, I got a few homies that ran up a cool half a ticket off the iPhone list. Yeah, everybody was doing that. I, I, man, I got a business plan in my uncle's name. I use my real uncle social. Got a family plan and got like 13 um, Galaxy S3s. Oh, my God. Was he upset with you? He didn't know. <laughs> I went in that nigga pocket, took his social. Green ass credit. 13 Galaxy S3 minis. You know, is, is that is that considered scamming your family? I mean, yeah. But that nigga was my step uncle though, so he ain't blood. I ain't never scammed on nobody in my family. Besides family, is anybody off limits? Like, would you not scam one of your friends? No, I wouldn't scam nobody. I don't. I ain't scammed nobody in like three, four years since back then with the scamming the fan shit and all that. That shit really dead for real. I don't scam people. If anything, I get help a motherfucker get some money. What about the 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 time where TJ he said that he scammed Black China? Like, was that something that you you were doing too? Like, uh, Yeah, the promo, paying for the promo. The promo, and, yeah. Yeah, he wasn't lying about that, paying for the promo. And then they post it, you get people, they, they think you the plug. So that's how we was really making money because a fucking a person with 5 million followers posted this designer page and said, go tap in. So how I would do it, I would private my page and she had posted a thousand people follow me, right? Within like five minutes, I'll post a deal. If you a new customer and you just follow me, any two items on this account is $1,000. Accept those 1,000 people. You got five, six people in your DM. I want to do the deal. I'm a new customer. I want to get two iPhones for $1,000. So now you done made 5000 off a $2,000 promo in five mm-hmm. minutes. Like, that shit real, bro. It's a lot of free sauce I'm really giving people right now. But all this shit dead. You can't do this no more. You can try, but it ain't going to work. You ever feared for your life? Like, once, somebody, once you scammed somebody, they told you they was going to kill you? Ain't nobody ever told me that. Uh, Cause when I was scamming people, when we was doing that, they that old scam, they don't know that this is Cash or Quan. I'm just a nigga off an of Instagram account. They don't know I got a, a burner phone. They don't know who I am. But I have scammed people that know it was me. But it wasn't really for, it wasn't really a scam. It was just like fraud bibles. 
with old burnt out ass methods that don't really work, but it might work if you do it right. But that's not up to me. You pay me a hundred dollars. That's what you get for a hundred bucks. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not really no scam for real. So, so you when you go out, you don't really look over your shoulder. No, nah, because it be of... it be out of town people. I never scam a nigga for a, from the city. I look at a nigga page. Like a nigga from the city be like, I got 80 on my cash app. <laughs> I'm like, run to this nigga at the store or something. I be like, nah. <laughs> I'm literally going to pick your face and be like, where you from, bro? Have a whole conversation with you. You feel me? You be like, oh, I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Nah, I'm good, fam. Keep the 500, the 1,000, the 2,000, 10,000, whatever. I don't want it. I'll get another nigga. Is Detroit, I mean, do you consider it dangerous still? Yeah, it's dangerous. You just got to know how to move, bro. Like, I be in the birds. Like, I don't. You just got to know how to move. Like, you can't just be in the hood. Like, me personally, I don't stop in the hood. Like, I don't be in the hood, at the stores in the hood. I be through the hood, in the car. Might go get some weed or something from a homeboy or something like that. But I don't be just hanging. Like, a nigga ain't finna just see me just hanging nowhere. You know what I'm saying? You just got to know how to move. Like, it's definitely still dangerous for sure, though. What's one part of Detroit that you'll tell nobody to go to? Man, I probably have to say, like, Brightmo or something. Brightmo? Yeah, no. that's a neighborhood, or that's a neighborhood, or a that's street. That's a neighborhood. Brightmore is like a neighborhood. It's like off, like I forgot the name of the street, but that's Finkel and it's like somewhere between Finkel. But no disrespect to um, Brightmo, but I had to say Brightmo and like Dexter Linwood area. Them two hoods janky as hell. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like what what makes that different from anywhere else in Detroit? When I just ride past that bitch, I be like, man, I hope I don't get no flat. I hope my car don't break down. <laughs> a nigga about to come see Cash Aquan in this bitch like, damn. And then, shit, I got my little pistol on me, but it might be five jack boys. My one little pistol ain't about to do shit to five jack boys. You feel me? Like, oh, stay man. Stay away from the hood, man. Don't go in the hood. Stay away from that. Yeah, I mean, people look up to, to you guys. They look up to the... The Bandman Kevos, the 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 cashier Quans, the TJs, the the fat, the get money fast, and the niggas who get money fast. A lot of people don't want to work jobs because of people like you. Yeah, um, a job is like, man, and like no disrespect to nobody with a job, but a job is like super crazy to somebody in our shoes. Like a nigga can wake up and make five to fifty thousand. You know, I'd have hit sixty five thousand dollar licks. You know what I'm saying? Like I done had had zero dollars and hit a sixty five thousand dollar lick. Like. Do you know how that feel? A nigga ain't gonna never see that. A nigga ain't gonna see that to his lifetime. You know what I'm saying, bro? So it's like it's different. Like getting paid a thousand a week, that ain't that ain't gonna click for like you know people like us. But to somebody else, that might fit. They bills paid. They got food in the crib. They good. I ain't knocking nobody else or nothing like that. But like people like us, that shit just a thousand dollars a week just ain't gonna kick. Cut it. Mm. Never worked a job ever. I've never put my name on a piece of paper for a job, bro. Like, like besides, like, my stepdad on, like, a hot dog truck. We would go, like, downtown Detroit in a good area and, like, sell hot dogs and shit. But that was my people's, though. I wasn't even getting paid for that shit. You feel yeah. me? Like, some shit like that. But I never, ever worked a job. Shit, I started jugging at, like, 12, 13, figuring this shit out. At least you're not promoting robbing people or um, burglarizing. At least you're doing that. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying, man. That that's that's a whole different ball game, like. But the, like, I feel like the scam and shit bad. People look at us it, like it's bad and shit, but like it's it's bad. But you're not you're not putting nobody uh nobody's life is on the line. And then I'm and then especially now I'm not scamming people. Like I'm scamming the bank. You know what I'm saying? Like they already scamming us. I'm scamming the bank. Like I ain't allegedly, scamming, allegedly, I allegedly. I'm scamming people, so it hit different. I take from the bank, not the government, is it? It is. Yeah, I'd rather take from them folks before I take from a nigga who ain't really a piss poor nigga that got $200. Charges aren't as bad, too. Scamming charges compared to armed robbery. You're going to get one year. You're going to get one to two years if you do some scamming shit, bro. In the feds, at the most. They ain't finna sit you down for no. You know what I'm saying? Because they got bigger fi fish to fry. Robbing a nigga and doing all that. That's ten, shit. at least ten. Man, my cousin is in jail right now. He is in all my old videos and like back in the day, he got like 15 years for robbing a nigga and then what he robbed a nigga for, it wasn't even worth it. Guess what he robbed a nigga for? A gun. Mm. He had a gun and robbed a nigga for a gun. Like, cuz, I would've gave you 400 bucks, 500 bucks, 
for the day, my nigga, like, you robbed a nigga for a gun and shot the nigga and got 15 years. Like, you deserve that, cuz. You know what I'm saying? Niggas, people from jail be calling me right now. I don't even answer. Call me a hoe ass nigga when you get out. I ain't got time to keep up with that shit, dog. Because if I was in that bitch, a nigga wouldn't be sending me shit. So people who are in jail when they call you, you don't you don't answer you don't send people money or anything. I do, but every once in a while they just overdo it. They will call a nigga every week, call a nigga every two days. You got some money, then they so damn smart they know about the cash app now. I know you got some money on cash app, cause like you feel me. So I, I look out for my for my people that's in jail, but I'm tired. Of, I I tell a nigga call me every two weeks. I mm. send you some shit. Like I might be laid up with my bitch fucking and cuz calling from jail. Like it's just like. My brother will call me like, yeah, I got such and such on the other line. You want to talk right now? I'm like, man, I'm doing some shit. Like, you feel me? Like, <laughs> man. Man, Cash Air Kwan, man. Another classic. Uh, oh, what do you have to say to everybody who, you know, all the rumors out there, the TJs, the, the fans, the scamming the fans, all the allegations, everything said about you. What do you have to say? I mean, shit, bro. All that shit. That shit old, like, niggas past that shit. Like, it's people who I didn't scam this shit. You said, like, scamming fans, right? Everything. From TJ, I just want, what do you really have to say to everybody who just has negative things to say about you overall? Man, I just feel like it ain't really nothing negative you should even be saying about a nigga now, nah, bro. I ain't scamming niggas, you feel me? I'm in my own lane. Like, it ain't really, like, if a nigga say something negative, you really just hating, like. Honestly, bro, it ain't really nothing negative a nigga should be saying about me. I don't, about TJ or shit, I don't know about none of that. But as far as on my end, like, I feel like a nigga can't really say no hating shit about a nigga. Like, what could you say? Like, what am I doing? What did I do? Would love to see you and TJ back together. Um, 2024 is going to be a crazy year. What you got coming? Man, this shit crazy. I don't think, I, I, don't, I think I'm going to drop. My first video in 2024. So I haven't put out nothing in four months, but I think I'm dropping 2024, man. Full press. I don't think I'm going to put out no more music at the end of this year.